The custom games and quest lines usually represent these teams the most. Sometimes it even becomes the lasting impression of a battle pass. By this point, even if TI9 had the best rewards to date, Morokai shot on its reputation so much that I wouldn't even be surprised if it was titled as the worst battle pass. I never joined bandwagons, so I wanted to give it a chance. Before I criticized Morokai, I played some games. Plenty of games. But still not enough to get those 50 wins. I need that emoticon. Why? Because it acts like street cred whenever you're looking for a serious stack. And if you think attempting this is insane, this is coming from a guy who cleared Siltbreaker with all 14 heroes on both acts. So what was my verdict after 30 games? Morokai is disappointing. And I don't think any future patches will change my mind. Why? To add some context into this, let's talk about the what. What is Morokai? It's just like a normal fight, except with little monsters on each side that grow into big monsters and kill everyone and destroy everything. Got it? Got it. And these monsters have their very own skill trees. Picking the spirit progression first is usually a safe bet. Wild Conjuration creates and sustains pushing power, and the Treacherous Trees is also a must-have in any team composition. I would recommend rushing the Wrath Path if your team is melee-oriented, just for the Volcanic Cleave. Unless your team is packing a ton of disables, max eruption immediately. It's harder to dodge and hits like a truck. If your team is riddled with spellcasters, go with the storm route. Storm casting can end games before your enemy can even buy BKBs. And Cyclone is just way too amazing to ignore. Once a Morokai reaches max level, it either sets up clashes or ends them. So how do you level them up? Why with Essence of course, these things drop everywhere. And hoarding a large amount of them increases your damage. And thus, the meta was born. Carries Hoard Essence while the supports level up the Morokai. Now that we're all on the same page, it's time to talk about why it disappointed me. It plays and ends like a normal Dota game. And that's a problem. After burning yourself out from completing your dailies, weeklies, achievements, and jungle expedition, the last thing you need is another round of Dota. Once you learn Morokai skill trees and essence hoarding, there's nothing else to figure out. The meta remains the same and thus boring. What's more frustrating is that Valve has done better battle pass games in the past. Siltbreaker was so well made, it could have been a standalone game. Draclion, a former WoW player, loved the campaign so much, he created a very long and detailed guide of Act 1. The only problem is that the reward system was shit. Under Hollow came at a time when battle royales were already a tired and oversaturated concept. Somehow, Valve made it work by making it a multi-team dungeon crawler. The reward system being a lot better also did it wonders. So when you compare Morokai with its predecessors, it just reeks of low effort. Some have compared it with Dota 1's Super Creeps, but I think Year Beast 2015 is a better comparison, although that has the excuse of not being a Battle Pass exclusive. Also, where the hell is the loading screen? Speaking of laziness, the Morokais are just palette swaps of each other, and look the same way in every level, and it just sits there. I thought the Morokais would have been imprisoned in a shrine, and your task is to bust them out. You know, like the one in the picture? And it's ideas like these that make me disappointed in it rather than hate it. There's just so many ways to make Morokai a bit more special. For one, they could have transformed the map into a single lane. This simple change would force teams to address the Morokai 
as soon as possible. It would also make the fights bloodier and faster. Heroes of the Storm's Dragonshire is also a perfect template. The top and bottom lane each houses a unique shrine, and the Morakai statue is located in the middle. The middle hero is necessary to awaken and possess the Morokai. But in order to do that, his teammates must be in control of both the top and bottom shrine. It makes all three lanes relevant and highlights zone control. Whoa! My pessimism just kicked in because I know these suggestions are falling on deaf ears. Valve neither has the time nor concern for a Morokai overhaul. How did it come to this? The answer is simple really. Create a deep and story driven campaign which ate up a lot of time and effort, it got shat on. Create a more accessible PvP mode following a popular trend, it got shat on. Create a better version of Year Beast 2015 and call it a Battle Pass exclusive, it got destroyed. Seeing a pattern here, no matter what they did, people gave it shit. I wouldn't even be surprised if TI-10 Battle Pass had no exclusive game. And if you think these Reddit posts hold no weight, you are clearly mistaken. Valve reads Reddit so much, it might as well be their unofficial feedback and bug report forums. The optimist in me, however, sees a glimmer of hope. The Morokai backlash created a Siltbreaker appreciation resurgence, and I hope it sends a message to Valve that ambition and passion does pay off, and there's a demand for it. I did plan on making a replay analysis video of a Morokai victory, just like I have done in the past, but it let me down so hard that I didn't even have the enthusiasm to make one. Instead, we have this. I just hope you guys have enjoyed this video.